All right, happy Veterans Day. Welcome. The ongoing adventures of Dare Through Whiskey Bravo. There it is, 343 Whiskey Bravo. Uh, we landed in Yakima yesterday, I think. Yeah, yesterday. And now we're headed for a full flight. We got a full flight. It's a holiday today, so we've got a little extra time. Just to warn you, I did a big run this morning, 21 miles up in the mountains. So there's a, a distinct possibility I may doze off during this sleep, during this flight. That was one of the reasons that I decided to make it a full flight because it would obligate me to uh, uh, entertain you with my witty uh, uh, insights. This is a joke, obviously. Anyway, we're in Yakima, and we are headed down to Salem, Salem, Oregon, for a very short flight. Uh, guessing about 40 minutes. That's my estimate uh, in the air. We'll fix the camera, which is, as usual, still defaulting to auto. Not a problem. And let's not waste any more time. We have inputted the flight plan into our uh, ForeFlight app, but just to give you an idea, we're taking off uh, from uh, or to the west uh, and uh, turning southwest. We'll fly right over uh, Portland, uh, try to dodge the uh, riots, and then... Uh, we have a straight-in approach into runway uh, 1-3, the RNAV approach into runway 1-3. Uh, this will shave a little time off just in as much as that we are taking off in the direction of the, our destination, and we don't have to do a lot of turning around in order to line up for our approach. So this, this helps. So enough talking, and let's uh, get going. We'll set our generator and our battery. Dumper November 343 Whiskey Bravo IFR to Salem ready to copy. Get our altitude. Air November 343 Whiskey Bravo is cleared to Salem Airport. Sync our altimeter. Take off runway 27 climb and maintain 12,000 feet. We're doing it. Low altitude IFR flight today. Uh, just because it's so close, only about 150 Dumper, miles away. Look at our cruising altitude. I'm sorry, I forgot it. I think it's 16,000. Intentionally setting that a little higher. I'm going to pass on the pushback today. Set our nav source to FMS. Set our PFD. PFD settings for... Other PFT settings for wind, option two. All right. Uh, go ahead and uh, pressurize the airplane. And uh, we'll do our lights here in a second, but we'll go ahead and contact uh, taxi I or contact the ground and request taxi IFR. And while they're doing that, we'll fire up the airplane. Activate our starter. And reconfirm that our parking brake is on. Wait till our NG percent gets to 13. There it is now. Low idle. Once our NG percentage gets to 52, 53, in other words, once this number turns green, we'll go up to high idle and then taxi on the throttle. And there it goes. Good. Activate our inertial separator, pedo heat, and uh, ox boost pump to auto. Set our strobe and taxi lights are on. Okay, that was fast. Okay, we're good to go. I'm going to pass on the uh, um, contact ground here a second, but we'll pass on pushback. I don't think we need it today. Let's see, we don't need ground services, so let's just see if we can pop outside here for a second. There it is, behind us. So I'll just turn it this way. Make a left turn. Assume our camera's defaulted back to auto, as usual it did. And we'll acknowledge master caution on the inertial separator being on. We'll deactivate our parking brake. Sorry, I just realized my... Flight stick's not plugged in. Let's see if this crashes it. <laughs> Cross your fingers. Oh, rats. Uh, keep default. 
Oh, boy. <laughs> How about we resume? What do you think? Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> we'll see if that screwed up our settings. But anyway, let's go. What do you think? We activate our parking brake. I'm going to kill this guy here, but that's tough shit for him because it's been a long day. There we go. I've been up since 4.30. 4 a.m. I don't know. I don't even remember. All right. Hopefully this does not constitute bad airmanship. Flying when I'm this tired. If I'm actually I'm certain that it does constitute bad airmanship, but whatever. Flaps. It's a short flight down to Salem. Yakima was very nice. Nice town. Ninety thousand people. Who knew? Still noticing this, this, I don't know if you can perceive it in the video, but just the, the taxiways will look, make sure nobody's coming in for a landing. Uh, is, uh, yeah, there's nobody. Um, I forget what I was saying. <laughs> Something about Yakima. I don't know. Anyway, it's a nice town. 91,000 people. That's not a lot of people. You get, you get uh, used to living in the big city, so to speak. Alright. I hope I didn't lose all my settings. Anyway, it's kind of chilly. Let's uh, 7 degrees outside, so let's turn our heater on so our passengers are comfortable. See if we still have our camera angles. Okay, good, we do. All right, flaps. Did I do flaps? I can't remember. I think I did. I'll check. Okay. All right, flaps are set at takeoff. Yes. Yakima Tower down for November Tree Four Tree Whiskey Bravo at runway two seven ready for takeoff IFR to Salem. Should we set our VS at eighteen hundred feet per minute? Three Four Tree Whiskey Bravo cleared for takeoff runway two seven. All right, we're clear for takeoff. Cleared for takeoff. Winds are out of the northwest, west northwest. Make sure nobody's coming. Nobody's coming. All right. Hey, we're going to be up off the ground in uh, about eight minutes, eight and a half minutes. That's a record for me. All right. Very good. Okay. So we'll go ahead and start our timer. Timer is started. All right. Switch that back to PFD mode. We'll sync our heading bug. Activate heading. Na and uh, VS is activated, or armed, rather. And that's enough of that. Let's go. Rotate about 90, to 90 knots. Seventy airspeed is alive. Eighty and rotate. Very good. Positive rate. Gear up. Nice smooth takeoff. Clear the runway. Air three whiskey Bravo contact Chinook departure on one two three decimal eight. Chinook, I think he said Chinook departure. One two three decimal eight. Docker Trey whiskey Bravo. We'll actually sink our heading back one more time. Chinook departure. Docker November three four. And we go ahead and activate autopilot. Activate yaw damper. We'll go ahead and activate our nav mode now that we're stable on our climb out. No need for landing lights anymore. Come back to that inertial separator in a second. ITT is a little high. So you go ahead and set our climb out percentage at about 70%. 70%. 
keep an eye on that right there, the torque percentage. That'll continue to increase as we get higher, as we become more efficient, so to speak. Climb out 150 knots, that's excellent. We'll deactivate our inertial separator. I continue to get lucky when it comes to weather. No, uh, nothing uh, dramatic uh, so far. Got the window, things look good. Making that 90 degree sharp left turn south, actually kind of south southeast. percentage again. Slide down now about 65. Airspeed's now 169. We'll activate the SLC, FLC, excuse me. We'll actually set it at 176. Good. I'll, uh, Pull up the weather here in uh, Salem, which I should have done already, but I'm too tired. Salem, S-A-L-E-M, Oregon, 54 degrees and mostly cloudy. Current uh, time, or obviously in Pacific Standard Time, because it's November 11th, Veterans Day again, as I said. Thank you to our veterans. Never want to be too busy to acknowledge their sacrifice. In any case, uh, I'm in Southern California near LA where it's now 2.15 in the afternoon on a Wednesday. I'm off work today. Although ironically, I'm more tired than I would have been if I'd gone to work from uh, 21 miles in the mountains this morning. Not that I'm complaining. I mean, I, I chose to do it. For us, it was pretty chilly. 34 degrees when I started my run this morning at 6 a.m. That's chilly for L.A. Anyway, enough about that. I'm only mentioning it to the extent that it explains why I'm freaking exhausted. Anyway, uh... My point was that the time is 2.15 here in Southern California, which means that it's 2.15 up here in Yakima, where we've just left, and now headed towards Salem, Oregon. I wonder how they react. Do they say Oregon or Oregon? I know in Nevada, they get pissed off when you say Nevada, so I always say Nevada. Anyway, Salem, Oregon. Yes, 150 miles to our destination right now. Tower Tree Whiskey Bravo contact Seattle Center on 132 decimal six. 132 six, Dear Bravo, good day. Going to 132 decimal six, Tower Tree Whiskey Bravo. Seattle Center, this is Dear Whiskey Bravo with you at 10,500 for 12,000. I assume they'll clear us up to our cruising altitude now. No, we'll get we'll get climbing instructions. They always do it the last possible second. We're at 11,100, now 200, climbing to 12,000. Probably at about 11,900. That's when they'll tell me to start climbing. That's why I intentionally set this a little bit higher, just so I don't have to go through all the rigmarole. We don't have very much gas on this flight, 34 left, 30 right, but it's a short flight, so I intentionally elected to not put a bunch of gas in, make us too heavy. Slight headwind, 10 knots. Tree, climb, and 16, feet. 
as predicted. 16,000 is our cruising. It is our cruising altitude, low altitude IFR. In the sim and in real life, low altitude IFR is anything 18,000 feet below. High altitude IFR is above 18,000 feet. But on such a short flight like this, you don't want to spend a bunch of time climbing, a bunch of time and a bunch of gas, climbing only to then uh, start descending. Or even worse, never even reach your cruising altitude because you selected something that was too, too high. This is a 12 knot headwind right now. There is a giant mountain in front of us see it here on the visualized simulation but we're going to be at 16,000 feet and that tells you something if you know your geography one dollar to anybody that knows the mountain we're headed towards it is Mount Adams I've flown around and or near Mount Adams on several occasions and several other flights. It's really breathtaking. But most important for our purposes is knowing how how tall it is. Mount Adams, I, if memory serves, is, I don't know, just a whisker above 12,000. All I remember uh, specifically regarding it is that it's uh, not 16,000 feet tall. And that's significant because that's going to be our cruising altitude by the time we get to it. Which is my way of saying we don't have to worry about colliding into it. We'll level out at 16,000 feet here in a second. Let's see right here. 15, 5. But it is cool to see how it's depicted there on the visualized simulation. Check our torque percentage is at 100. Remember, it was about 77 before, so it has increased as we've become more efficient. I don't know what just happened here. This is, uh, I don't know what that was. Anyway, we, we just got good weather on this, these, the east side of the Cascades, but as we so we're going to hand it off to Seattle's passed on to another frequency. Already getting the Salem ATIS information, Seattle's automated Chicago terminal information system. Frequency 124.55. It's always a sign that we're close. I use the ForeFlight app uh, on my iPad, and it really helps with the game. Look at look at Mount Adams. <laughs> That's sweet. That is beautiful. You can actually see we're going to pass. Just south of it, it's southeast of the peak, we're in no danger of any collision or anything like that, but it should be a real breathtaking pass over the peak for our passenger on the left side of the airplane. We might pick up a little chop as we get closer to it, because at 16,000 feet, that, that peak's only going to be about 4,000 feet below us. So the closer you get to terrain, especially mountainous terrain, the greater you're likely to notice turbulent air. Get over 
how pretty the scenery is in this game. I mean, it's just beautiful. Really, I mean, I've not been, I'm not one for hyperbole, but really pretty. Look at that mountain. Wow. Wow. That is... Break out your iPhones, fellas. Yes, needless to say, the... Uh, I summited a peak today on my... run. In, uh, the Santa Ana Mountains, Cleveland National Forest. Called Hagador. Hagador Peak. I always liked that name. Hagador Peak. It sounds like something out of uh, Middle Earth. Anyway, we're closing in on uh, Mount Adams here. I wish I could pop up even higher. Well, I guess a little I can. A little. Look at that. Holy mackerel. That's as close as I've ever gotten to it. Just beautiful. That is a knockout. That might be worth going outside just to look at for a second. Hold on. <laughs> oh my goodness. That is sweet. My mountain this morning is only 4,000 feet. Considerably less challenging. Let's see if our passenger can see anything. Not yet. out there though you can see that well that's no slouch it's got to be right here has to be right here yeah it's got to be right here yeah it is Check our airspeed. 200 knots indicated. Oh, shit. You know what I just realized? I never retracted the goddamn flaps. Oh, this is what you get when you're tired. Well, that was embarrassing. But, uh, hey, listen. This is further evidence, as I've said before. I don't, uh... <laughs> I let you guys see everything, even if it's ugly. Yeah, I forgot to retract the flaps. How embarrassing. Well, at least the inertial separator and the gear's up. The inertial separator's off. Remember, I flew from Coeur d'Alene from Pasco, Washington. I flew to Coeur d'Alene, and somehow my gear deployed halfway through the flight. I think it's probably very bad, mechanically, for the airplane to have its flaps. Uh, deployed or extended below or rather above 120 knots on the upside we caught it there's something to be said for that and our airspeed now is considerably higher that actually was what alerted me to it when I saw it was 199 knots I'm thinking what why is it so low and uh, the reason it was low was because I forgot to the flaps like a complete idiot but we're moving right along and estimated time on route now 24 minutes this was 
wise of me, though, to uh, to uh, decide to do a full flight and to narrate it because I'm so tired that I can barely keep my eyes open. Now, I am not in any way suggesting that Flight Sim is boring. I do not think it's boring. However, and I wonder how they deal with this in real life, probably by restricting pilots from getting up at 4 in the morning and running 21 miles in the mountains before a flight. But my point is just that the white noise of the engine can be very relaxing. I'm the only person that thinks that. I think it's very relaxing. But good. In all respects, now that we retracted our flaps at 199 knots indicated at 16,000 feet. Apologies in advance to the uh, passengers. Hopefully I can be forgiven. A little chop, but nothing too dramatic. When I watch this video later, I'll look to see whether flaps were obviously deployed. And I just didn't notice it because I'm so exhausted. What a pretty day. I love being in between cloud layers like this. It's so bitchin'. Okay, well, we're not going to have a lot of time to dawdle here because we're about to get our... I expect we'll get our descent instructions here in the next couple of minutes. We have about 271 knots across the ground right now. Showing 22 minutes from the airport at our current airspeed. It's probably going to be more like about 26. I love that I remembered to turn off the landing lights after we took off, but not retract the flaps. I really need to be more disciplined about bringing up the gear and retracting the flaps simultaneously, or nearly simultaneously. Alaska 1410. Let's bring that up on FlightAware and see what uh, what that is. Alaska 1410 is a real flight from Seattle to hey to Santa Ana, John Wayne, Orange County. Departed Seattle at 1:54 p.m. Arriving John Wayne, Orange County at 4:22 p.m. Three zero one zero altimeter is currently set at three zero one zero. Okay, so unchanged. I love flying the Pacific Northwest. I really do. The mountains are just. So cool. That's Mount Hood. Right there. Mount St. Helens, presumably. Farther south. I think that closer one is Mount Jefferson. Right there. The other one might actually be Mount Bachelor. Just uh, making some deductions. Well, that was cool to hear that uh, Alaska flight inbound to John Wayne Orange County. I'll have to go outside in my yard if I'm not sleeping. Around, uh, oh, 4 15. That's when it should fly over my house.
they're getting a little chopped, but nothing terrible. Just 84 miles now, 19 minutes. Whew, am I tired. minutes since we started the video. I think we took off about eight minutes in, but I don't have to guess because I started my timer. 22.30, so we're 22 minutes into the flight. Go ahead and enter our minimums now while I'm thinking about it. Parametric minimums for Salem are 580. Airport elevation is at uh, 213 feet. Approach course for runway 13 is 133. Runway length is 5,811 feet. Very similar to runway 20 right at John Wayne, which I think is 56 or 5,700 feet. Headwinds are building a little. Five knots now, nothing, nothing too problematic. If we were a little higher, we'd probably have to deal with icing, but we're just skirting underneath this upper level cloud, le cloud deck. And remember, the uh, live weather at uh, Salem is uh, mostly cloudy degrees, so we'll see if that holds. It's a short flight, but hopefully our passenger's dozing. I found a uh, place in uh, Yakima last night after I landed. A little bed and breakfast. But I can't remember the name. Obviously, that's a little strange, right? I'm actually not staying in any bed and breakfast. But it's fun to pretend, right? Oh, I remember. Rosedale Mansion bed and breakfast. That's where I decided to stay. Sixteen minutes. Seventy-one miles. Moving right along. Nice short flight from Yakima to Salem, Oregon. United 1007. Is going from San Francisco to Seattle. Okay. Yeah, when you hear the generic reference on ATC, that's a, another simmer. Like me. Closing in on uh, Portland, in the outskirts of Portland right here. Passing over the the Great Columbia River right there. I went to Portland, oh, I don't know, a few years ago, and uh, I liked it. I thought it was a charming city. Wish I could say the same today. Making our left turn now. You can see here on the uh, MFD KPDX. PDX is 
the uh, code for Portland International. There's an airplane right there. There's our descent instructions. Switch our altitude selector to 10,000 and begin our descent. Vertical speed will descend at 1,200 feet per minute. Okay. In terms of uh, the approach, published approach plate, uh, for Salem, McCoy at McCoy, we need to be anywhere between 6,000 and 3,100 feet, no lower than 3,100 feet. At Iverson, we need to be at 2,600 feet. At Artie, 2,100 feet. Distance between McCoy and Iverson is 3.1 nautical miles from Iverson to Artie is 3.0 nautical miles and from Artie to the airport is uh, 5.8 nautical miles. So because the airplane airport rather is effectively at sea level or close to it, 200 feet, 213 feet, uh, We know that we want our uh, altitude to be about 3,000 feet, 10 miles out. I am doing uh, kind of a high-speed descent here, just to try to make up for time for that embarrassing flaps error. And it's working doing 254 knots, but we're still in the safe zone. We're not in the uh, barbershop pole portion. We do need to be beneath 250 knots indicated whenever we're below 10,000 feet. But we're still at uh, 13,500 feet, so not a problem. There's Portland. I did enjoy Portland when I went up there. Food was good. Great craft beers. Beautiful weather. My kind of weather. Alright, remember we've been cleared down to 10,000. We'll see what happens when we get to 10,000. But the fact that ATC has given us the scent instructions is a good sign. And, and again, we don't have mountainous terrain here, so I would expect to not have to worry too much about uh, goofy, contradictory instructions. Coming up on Lake Oswego, off the left nose of the airplane over right here. Closing in on it. Right when I said that I found ATC to be more reliable in non-mountainous regions, they fuck up and give us stupid instruction to climb after telling us to descend at 10,000. It's all right, we'll make it work. It's not the end of the world. It's particularly aggravating when you get an order to climb to an altitude that's way above you you know that's it's 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 maddening just maddening it cleared via the 
uvg transition uniform bravo golf uvg right here i do like the way the light glimmers off the waterways the sunlight glimmers off the waterways that's pretty Closing in on UBG now, just uh, 6.3 nautical miles and uh, 86 seconds till we make our left turn. Holding at 12,000, we'll see uh, if they give us further descent instructions. Showing just eight minutes from the airport right now. A little concerning. Of course, that's at our very fast speed, which I'm doing on purpose to try to make up for a little lost time there on the uh, added drag that we had from the accidental failure on my part to bring in the flaps after takeoff. go. So again, 3,100 feet, not a coincidence. You'll recall I said that at our uh, McCoy waypoint, we need to be anywhere between 3,100 feet and 6,000 feet. That's according to the official FAA approach plate. Descending at, uh, let's, let's descend at 1,500 feet per minute. As we dip below 10,000 feet, we will need to slow to slower than 250. Still at full power, so that's why as we descend, our airspeed is going up. Showing just six minutes now from landing. So let's go ahead and slow us down. better only 27 miles from the airport we're still at 11,000 feet so remember I want to be at about 3,000 feet 10 miles from the airport so and this is a straight in approach so there's not a lot of room to uh, screw around Beautiful view for our passenger. I just love this airplane. And I love this sim. I feel kind of bad. I hear stories about other people and the nightmares they're experiencing trying to get this thing to run. I don't know. I'm, works great for me. I'm lucky, I guess. It, it's probably... Uh, in no small measure a result of the fact that I have a new PC, you know, a clean install. I'm sure that makes a big difference. That's the Willamette River right there. It's another one. How do they pronounce it? Willamette? No, I think it's Willamette. Yeah, the Willamette River. Fuel showing 16 left, 20 right, but we're only less than five minutes from the airport now. Closing fast. Let's go ahead and slow us down a little bit more. But descending uh, briskly at 1,800 feet per minute. Remember, though, we get to McCoy, which is only, what, at 1 minute 53 seconds away. We need to be at 30. 3100 so two basically let's just call it two minutes okay and if we're descending at 1800 feet per minute that's 3600 feet off of let's just say 7000 uh, well that puts us at about 3400 feet so it's actually just fine famous last words right ah it'll be fine We'll be fine. We'll be fine. 
even when I'm tired. In the sim, anyway, I know what I'm doing. It's one of the upsides to having 170 hours in a simulated aircraft. Passengers got a nice view, right? See if that weather holds in terms of mostly cloudy. Five minutes now from the airport, and 62 seconds from McCoy. 62 seconds descending at 1,800 feet per minute. We're at 5,400, 5,300. It's about 3,500 at McCoy. A little higher than we want to be, but nothing that is going to pose a serious problem. Or any problem. It's not going to pose a problem. It's fine. No ILS or anything to program here. Let's shallow out now. 2,600. That's the next published approach altitude, as you recall. Why they're telling us to descend at 2600 when well, we don't need to be at 2600 until we get to Averson? I don't know. Maybe it's it's roughly contemporaneous, so I shouldn't complain too much. Let's uh, sh uh, throttle back even more. Looking good. Uh, there's the runway. There it is. barely see it. It does look to be cloudy. That's always fun to see if the weather is going to be right. Iverson now 45 seconds away. We want to be at 2,600 feet at Iverson. We're at 3,300 feet now, descending at 1,600 feet per minute. No problemo. In fact, we can shallow out even more, which is good, because that'll slow us down. Kind of foggy down there. Okay, we're leveling out at 2,600 feet now, so I'm going to set our next altitude setting at our minimums of 580 feet, just so you don't stop descending. We'll set it 600, and we'll do vertical speed. We don't need to be descending at 1,000, though. Let's just descend more conservatively at 700 feet per minute. Airspeed's good now, 147, and descending. We're at uh, zero nine or six. Yeah, that's that's consistent with the winds that I saw when I uh, checked real weather in in Salem. Zero nine or six and four. So f four knots from the east. Good. All right, so despite my... Why do you keep telling me that? Jesus Christ. What, what, that's another bug. Why am I keep continually being told the same thing? Anyway, no worries. It's okay. There's the runway. I do see the runway and ten, uh, instrument landing lights those white lights right there. We're going to keep an eye on our airspeed. We'll go through our Gifley checklist now. Gear. Inertial separator. Fuel is 16 and 18. Flaps, one notch. Lights. And deactivate the yaw damper. Okay, good. But uh, kind of an instrument approach, i got to be honest. Uh, those lights, those runway end lights were coming in and out of uh, view. Those trees definitely were definitely on final. That's for sure. I do see... Nice. There's the magenta diamond right there. Have that start to drop down. Keep an eye on our airspeed, of course. If this drops down, we hopefully can grab the glide path. See how it's moving down now? That throttle is just so oversensitive. God damn. So we'll press the approach... Actually, approach button. I don't know if I pressed it or if it just 
activated, but this should turn green here as this magenta diamond drops below that second dot. Now's the time for our final knot to flap, so that'll slow us down. See that? <laughs> Look at that plummeting. There we go. Come on, grab, baby, grab! Okay, don't... There, grabbed! Nice. Keep our airspeed about 85 knots. That's what we want. Let's pop up here. Fully configured for landing. Good. Reconfirm three in the green. Yes. And Salem. Here we are. Salem. And we're going to be under an hour on our episode length. Make that out. Two mile final. Yeah, I mean, uh, airspeed's perfect, by the way, 86, 87 knots. This is a very good example about why you want to be able to know how to use RNAV approaches or non-precision approaches at airports that don't have ILS, because, I, I mean, this would be a goddamn nightmare trying to negotiate this approach without some help from instruments. Period. Period. I mean, we're, we're closing in on our minimums, and I, I do have the runway, but still. Anyway, we're fully configured for landing now. Airspeed's perfect. I'm going to have to pop up a little more here just to get a good vision visual on the runway. Wow, this is 500 AGL. This is the most uh, visually challenging landing I've done in a while. Okay, finally seeing some Vossies. Holy mackerel, this is a beauty. Okay, now that we have the runway in sight, we're at our minimums. Autopilot's disengaged. I see two reds on the Vossies. There we go, white and red now. That's good. Oh, man. This is an adventure. This game's always an adventure, though. Red and white on the on the Vossi. Vertical approach slope indicator. Looking good. Runway 13 confirmed. Airspeed's perfect. 87 knots. And let's go and idle it. Flare. Nice. Let's use our reverse thrusters on this one. Not the longest runway in the world, for sure. There we go. Well, that went really well. Weather appears pretty true to form. I. I I would kind of describe this as fog. I'm using my feet to steer here. Hold on. Uh, honestly, folks, I uh, I haven't yet seen fog in the sim. This looks kind of foggy. I'm impressed. All right, let me uh, go ahead and contact ground. Uh, and let's get to, over to parking. All right, while we're doing that, flaps, tracted. Depressurize. Keep our inertial separator on. Okay. Zoom in here. Take a look out the. Make sure nobody's on the way. Nope, we're good. Still, still mastering the art of steering with my feet. It'll you know, be one thing to learn how to steer with your feet, but when you also have to incorporate constantly changing uh, sensitivity issues, and I don't mean sensitivity in terms of you know. How much does he like Broadway? Uh, I mean, uh, you know, 
the control sensitivity, I mean, it can really be a challenge. Because the, the, the device itself is fine. It's just a function of the software. Anyway, yeah, this this is kind of foggy, and that's all I can think of to describe it. I've never really seen, never really seen that. Well, it looks like they want us to cross the same runway we just landed. That's kind of unusual because. As you recall, when we landed, Entered runway one, three, three, one. we um, were told to turn right, and now we're being vectored back across, back onto the same runway that we were on, and uh, told to uh, get back on it and turn left. So that's kind of strange. I don't know what, what that's all about got three and a half minutes to make my hour episode length rule but I don't want to go too fast because that's not safe safety is my middle name all right that's enough of this I'm doing 16 knots right now which is respectable and certainly permissible It's all right. I, I take it as an opportunity to get further training and learn, and an opportunity to to get further experience on steering with my feet. I see our guy. There he is. I'm going to save us a little time by instead of doing this stupid going around all this way, I'm just going to go this way and turn left. You know, you're dealing with AI at the end of the day. Okay. Turn off our taxi lights. Very good. All right, parking brake. Knowledge. Good morning. Okay. Okay. Oh man, I think I need to take a nap. Okay. And that's that. We're good. All right. Okay, that's it. We'll do our usual inspection outside. We did make it just under the wire on the hour limit. There it is. Beautiful free whiskey bravo. I mean, if this doesn't seem like fog, then nothing does. Looks like fog to me, brother. Outstanding. Just outstanding. Okay, so now we're in Salem. Very cool. All right, again, happy Veterans Day, and uh, we'll see where we go next. Time will tell. Welcome to Salem, local time, 3.01 p.m.